Number six, other people told me I was better than him. Some people even validated the nasty thoughts that my ego was telling me. When I look back now, I know that most of these people weren't really my friends and they really didn't have my best interests in mind when they were telling me that, but that didn't stop me from believing them at the time. That's because it was easy to believe what you already believed. This is, obviously, this is, this is them reinforcing what you think. She continues, because they were saying, because what they were saying made my ego even bigger, I believed them and let it blind me to how great a guy I really had. Oh, good God. Guys, she just contradicted herself like all women do. So she says that her friends told her that she was better than he was. But then earlier, she said, I was so lucky to be dating one of the sweetest, greatest guys around, and all of my friends told me so. So which is it? Did your friends tell you that you were better than him, or did they tell you that he was the greatest guy ever? Well, the answer is that it doesn't matter. Okay? What Melanie is doing here is what all women do when it comes to rationalizing their bad behavior. And that, of course, is blame shifting. Miss Carnotal wants us to think that she has all of these wonderful friends because, of course, a woman who has a bunch of wonderful friends validates her as a person and gives her social proof. But then, by the same token, she wants us to think that her friends let us led her astray by telling her that she was better than her ex. She wants us to think that her friends blew up her ego, which indirectly removes part of her responsibility. And remember, guys, at this point, she wants us to think that she almost left the love of her life. But again... We know she's not with him anymore, so she ended up leaving him anyway. <clears throat> and by the way, guys, she keeps using the word ego. But that's not the reason she blew up her relationship, gentlemen. She blew up her relationship because, A, she's the typical American female who gobbled bananas all through her 20s. And B, her boyfriend had a lower perceived value than she did. So her ego didn't end this relationship. Her relationship was ended by promiscuity and hypergamy. And that's all there is to it. Number seven. My ego turned me into someone I didn't even like. She says, quote, because I had such high opinions of myself and thought I was so awesome, I became someone who did things that I would normally, that I would have normally never done. I started talking about myself too much. I wanted attention from guys, and I wasn't acting like someone that is loving, caring, and humble. When I finally took a step back, she says, and looked at what I had been doing, I realized I was turning into someone who was capable of cheating on their boyfriend, and that definitely was not someone I ever wanted to be. And it finally shook me enough to realize how much damage I was doing to my relationship and the man I really loved. No, sweetheart. You didn't turn into someone you didn't like. You were always this way. And so are most women. Girls always talk about themselves too much. Girls always want attention from guys. Young, attractive women are anything but loving, caring, and humble because they don't have to be. At least, not to the nice guys. To bad boys, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're all of these things. And to say that she was never capable of cheating... This is disingenuous because, again, she was always this way. Gentlemen, don't fall for this. Women like her want us to think that they're... Like, like, like Melanie, she wants us to think that she was this paragon of virtue who would never be selfish or solipsistic. She wants, to th she wants us to think that she was this loving, caring, humble female who would never succumb to all of the male attention and step out on her man. But she was always this way, and she knows it. I've, ne I've guys, I've never seen, I guess what you what you would call retroactive snowflaking before, but here she is trying to convince us that she acted completely out of character when she conducted herself the way that she did. Suffice it to, to, suffice it to say, I ain't buying it, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't either. Number eight, I didn't see how our relationship was falling apart. As I let my ego grow, she said. And kept thinking about how awesome I was and how much more I deserved. I didn't realize that my relationship was falling to pieces all around me. I didn't see that the intimacy started to fizzle out. Our that hour, oh Jesus, that hour conversations because forced and depressing. Guys, 
and again, you guys can look at this. I copy and paste this to my notes. It's just unbelievable how much, I, listen, not to be a grammar Nazi, but this just proves that women just, they never do anything completely. Anyway, anyway, that our conversations became forced and depression and depressing. And I definitely didn't see how much it was affecting him and hurting him. Actually, she says, when I think about it, maybe I did see all of those things, but my ego told me to ignore them. Did you see how she tried to act like she didn't see that she was hurting her boyfriend, but then she kept it real in the end and admitted that she did see these things, but decided to ignore them? Guys, she absolutely saw what was happening. She just didn't care. And that's all there is to it. But let's rewind it a little bit here, guys. Let, let's just rewind it and take stock. Because I've noticed something here. If you're paying attention, you're starting to see that this and this entire article is one giant blame shift. She keeps blaming her bad decisions on her ego. Melanie is not saying I ignored them. She's saying my ego told me to ignore them as if to say it is something outside of herself telling her what to do. If you guys remember earlier, she said, my ego made me believe. My ego made me believe that this guy wasn't worth my time. I let my ego take over. You guys picking up on how she's trying to distance herself from her ego as if her ego is its own separate independent entity, separate from her that makes its own decisions and influences her? The title of the article is, I almost left the love of my life because of my ego. Guys, she's blaming her ego for the demise of her relationship. She never takes responsibility herself. She isn't saying, I cheated on him, or I was a bad girlfriend. No, she keeps saying, my ego told me to cheat on him. My ego told me to be a terrible girlfriend. Guys, Miss Kernodal is not taking responsibility for her actions. She's blaming her ego. And she talks about her ego in such a way that implies that it's almost another person when you think about it. Seriously, the way she describes her ego, you would think that it's a completely separate person from her. Now, I'll give her full marks for the way she's doing this. Rationalization hamster or not, guys, I have never seen this level of blame shifting. But this is why you have to pay attention to what women say and read between the lines. Because if you don't, you could be sitting in front of a woman giving you this same story in the same way or something like it. But instead of holding her accountable for her actions, you subconsciously absolve her because she's done such a great job separating herself from her ego, which makes you think that she was just an innocent bystander while her big bad ego controlled her mind and made her, all, made her do all those horrible things that she wouldn't normally do. You guys have to pay attention. Number nine. I thought I could break hearts and not get caught. Oh, man. She says, quote, I made myself believe that I was so awesome and so invincible that it wouldn't matter if I broke his heart. I went around acting like I was the best thing in town and not caring how it hurt my partner. I seriously thought I was invincible, that nothing could stop me from doing what I wanted. I was so wrong. Not only did my actions hurt him, they also hurt me. What she's describing here, gentlemen, is her abundance mindset back then compared to her scarcity mindset today. And let me explain what this means. When she, when, 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 when she was in her 20s, Melanie didn't care about breaking hearts. Why? Because there was always going to be another guy she could branch swing to. Who cares if she gets caught cheating? Who cares if she, who cares if her ex-boyfriend tells everyone she cheated and she's disloyal? She was still young and pretty enough for guys to dismiss these things. Like anything else in life, guys, and we all know this, the more valuable you are, the more people are willing to sort of tolerate your baggage. The more talented, a rece the, more talented the receiver is, like Antonio Brown, the more tolerant the Raiders are to him getting frostbite on his feet or, or feet or filing a BS grievance to the NFL about his helmet as a ruse to miss training camp and take the attention off of his feet. The better a salesperson you are, the more willing your employer and supervisors will be to sort of look the other way when you're, th when you're late three days a week or that you don't come to all of your meetings. 
or that occasionally you're a no call, no show. You come in and you put numbers on the board. You're the number one salesman. They're going to tolerate these things. This woman could break hearts and not pay the price back then. But now that she's in her 30s, she is experiencing those consequences. Guys are not as willing to put up with her, with her inflated sense of entitlement because that's really what her ego is. Right? They're not willing to put up with that as much as they did in their 20s. Just like when the Cincinnati Bengals didn't offer Terrell Owens a contract extension at the end of his career because he wasn't as productive anymore. But the Dallas Cowboys signed him, even though he had blown up the locker room here in Philly because then he was still one of the best receivers in the league. Young pretty girls can get away with just about anything when they're young and pretty. But as soon as they hit the wall, dudes don't give them as much leeway, guys. If really anything at all. Melanie Kernodal was invincible in her 20s. Invincible. But now in her 30s, not so much. Let's move to number 10. <clears throat> my perspective clouded my judgment. From where I stood, she thought, she says, the relationship was looking pretty sad and I thought I deserved better. So I let that perspective convince me that I could do things that I wouldn't normally do. Here we go with that again. I flirted with other guys and I was careless about being honest with my partner. I thought I was in a crappy relationship and really I was the one being crappy. If only I changed my perspective, I would have seen how much I was ruining the best relationship, I, the best relationship of my life. Good thing I finally got a grip on reality and realized what I was doing before I let the whole thing blow up in smoke. I am so grateful, she says, that I didn't because I am still with that guy and he is seriously the love of my life and I never want my ego to get in, and and I never want my ego to get in the way of our relationship again. There she goes with the blame shifting this time. But this time it wasn't her ego that made her do it. This time it was her perspective she said i let that perspective convince me i could do things i wouldn't normally do no sweetheart you convinced yourself you could do things that you always do again guys she's trying to make us think that she's this decent woman just filled to the brim with moral fiber until her big bad per uh, uh, perspective seduced her into fl into flirting with other guys and cheating on her boyfriend clearly things that she would never normally do get out of here with that now, to her credit, she does start to take a little bit of accountability by actually owning the fact that she could have changed her perspective, but this was by accident. Because then she says she would have seen that she was ruining her relationship as if to imply that she was just completely blind to the fact that she was being a terrible girlfriend. So she kind of took that back. She started to give accountability and then she bl put the blame back on the perspective. Then she says, well, it's a good thing I got a firm grip on reality. That's not what happened. Sweetheart, dude, he may have caught her cheating, which shocked her back into reality. She may have had a pregnancy scare or may have actually gotten pregnant and got an abortion, and that shook her enough to make her stop cheating. I mean, it could be any number of things. We'll never know. So while I don't know and no one will ever know what really made her snap out of it, I know what didn't, and that is her. Like I said before, guys, women never stop bad behavior because they just all of a sudden realize the error of their ways. It's usually something that prevents them from getting away with whatever they are doing. And because they don't want to be alone, because they don't want to get dumped by their boyfriends, then they stop. And guys, I just love how she went hyperbolic and said that he is seriously, seriously the love of her life. He is seriously the love of her life. That's elevated. Guys, that's a telltale sign that he seriously is not, which leads me to lesson number four. Anytime a woman describes herself as happily married, she most certainly is not happily married, right? Women who say things like he is seriously the love of my life or I am happily married, they're not trying to convince you. They're trying to convince themselves which is exactly why they use hyperbolic adjectives when describing their relationships. Dude, straight up, man, if I had a nickel for every wife I slept with who told me she was happily married, I'd have a lot of nickels. Then, of course, right there at the end, she removes blame from herself one more time for good measure by saying that she'll never let her ego get in the way of her relationship again, as if to imply that her ego is separate from her. 
Well, we now know that her ego reared its ugly head again because they are not together anymore. 